Welcome back to me, Green, my friends. Welcome back. Today is a special day. I'm going to show you the single most important item that instantaneously enhanced my barbecue forever. If you get your hands on this item, I promise you it will enhance your barbecue for the rest of your life so long you use it. This item is actually so important to the way that I do barbecue, I can't live without it. Every time I cook barbecue, whether it's for the family or for a big event, this item has changed my life. Marcus, what's the item? I know you're on pins and needles. I'll show you in a second. <laughs> it's a food warmer <laughs> and I'm stoked. Did you guess it? If you guessed it, you're right. Okay, let me explain it before, before you click off of this video because I know what you're already thinking. I'm not gonna get a commercial size food warmer, my friend. You don't have to get a commercial size food warmer. Stay tuned in the video. I'm gonna explain exactly what you can do um, to get your hands on a food warmer. And I promise you, it, it will instantaneously change the way your barbecue tastes forever. So uh, for many years, as you may or may not know, I've been barbecuing for a fairly long time, over a decade. And for most of those years, I was resting my meats in coolers or something like a cooler. And it's you, we always run into the same issue. Like you might be able to pour some hot water in there, condition the cooler, then pour the water out once it's warm, put your meat in and hold it. You might be able to squeeze out eight hours, maybe if you're using a good cooler, but we've all been in a scenario where you kind of go to the meat and it's not holding how you thought. So I did that for many years. And then a couple years ago, my family decided to start an inaugural, an annual 4th of July barbecue firework bash. We invited a bunch of people. A bunch of people came out. As the resident barbecue cook in the family, I was commissioned to cook for all these people. If you're a longtime follower of the channel, then you know that this channel started with me building a 500 gallon smoker. I built that smoker so I could cook for all these people. Also because it's super cool to have a 500 gallon smoker. But there was some application because I had a bunch of people to cook for. So we checked that off. I can cook for all these people. But then once I started to do the math and I realized that I'm going to have to serve all these people at five o'clock, briskets take 12 plus hours. It's five o'clock the next day, but I'm cooking the day before. There was, there was a gap. I realized I'm not going to be able to hold, I don't know, 12 or something briskets and all these ribs for 15 hours. So I started to go to the drawing board and I remembered that, wait a second, all the guys in Texas are using these warmers. I went to Franklin Barbecue. I saw the warmers there and it all started to make sense. Epiphany, I need a warmer. I rented one. Okay, so that's first. I didn't buy this years ago. I rented a warmer from a local company. So when I rented the warmer and I used it, I ate my first bite of brisket. And I kid you not, guys, it was, it was the best brisket that I ever made in my life. I mean, truly. The, I, I can't even put into words how much better the brisket was than all the other briskets I cooked. And prior to resting my briskets in the warmer, I thought I made a pretty darn good brisket. But I came to the realization at the end of all of that cooking and all of the serving and all of the partying, and the next day, all I could think about was what the heck did I do to make the brisket that good? This is not a pat on my back. I'm not tooting my own horn, but I, I kid you not, it was, it was restaurant quality brisket. And the only common denominator that I could think of was this guy. I just introduced a warmer. I trimmed it the same way. I seasoned it the same way. I ran my pit the same way. I didn't change anything other than the fact that I rested the brisket for 17 hours. And the net result was the most jiggly meat meteorite that I had ever seen. And it was in that moment where I went on a journey to find my own warmer. And so here we are. I found it. If you can't see, your boy is happy. So let's talk about it. This bad boy is fresh off the truck, meaning do not judge me because I have not deep cleaned this. Rest assured, I will deep clean this and I will fill it with every Yeti, meet and greet, Howler Bros, whatever sticker that I can get my hands on. Now, with that said, behold, FWE warming cabinet. This is used. I paid exactly $650. I know, mind blowing. Some people might think I overpaid. Some people might be as shocked as I was to get my hands on a food warmer for $650. 
given that most of these new commercial units are in the multiple thousands of dollars. So let's just jump right into it. Let's talk about the features, advantages, and benefits of having a beautiful warmer like this. So a couple things. It is knob controlled, meaning there's no digits. It's not digital. It is controlled via this knob. So we go from 60 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 190 degrees Fahrenheit. I hold all my briskets somewhere between 145 to 150. I'll talk about why when I release my brisket video, which that's coming soon, so stay tuned. In my brisket video, I'll break down all the methodology behind resting briskets in this bad boy. But just know, typically I'll never have this thing higher than about 150, maybe 155. We have a temperature gauge that tells us exactly where the warmer's at. And that's about it as far as the knobs and the dials are concerned. Now, the reason why it took me two years, yes, you heard that right. It took me two years to pull the trigger on a warmer. One, because of price. Two, because, well, these things just aren't flying off the shelves at your local home goods store, and they certainly aren't readily accessible in central Missouri. So it took me a little bit. But the reason why it took me two years was because it was imperative that I got a uh, humidity, I don't want to say controlled because you can't really control the humidity, but it has, it has down in here. And also check the lizard lick lackadaisical freaking Tacovas. Tacova, holla at your boy. These puppies are nice anyways. When you look good, you feel good. When you feel good, you make better barbecue. This has a pan that I don't have. I need to buy one. But the pan slides into this slot. And what happens is you fill the pan with water. And as the temperature is climbing and as it's holding at that beautiful 145 degrees, the pan will warm the water and begin to evaporate the water, which gives us humidity inside of this unit. One of the secrets to, um, I'm not even going to be the guy to say secret to Aaron Franklin. If you ever hear me say that, slap me. One of the cool things that happens at Franklin Barbecue is um, they have these food warmers. And I think the one they use is like a special, it's called Halo Heat, if I'm correct. And it has this cool humidity thing that happens on the inside of the warmer. Essentially what it's doing is it's creating a warm, humid environment rather than a warm, dry environment. And that benefits briskets and other meats that you're holding. And so that was important to me. So I made sure that I didn't pull the trigger on a unit unless there was a way for me to introduce humidity into the warming chamber. So that's first. Second, it holds, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's 12. We'll just say 12, something like that. It holds a lot of full-size sheet pans, and, and you can stack them from the very top all the way to the very bottom. Now, in future videos, I'll actually show you guys um, the end product of a lot of meats that I put on here, but what I know from using this uh, type of unit is the closer you get to the heating element at the bottom, the hotter that, of course, it makes sense, right? The closer you get to the heating element, the hotter and the warmer that that meat's gonna be. The last two thirds of the unit really for me is kind of the sweet spot. Somewhere down in here, like probably right about here, eh, maybe I could hold some ribs on there for a little bit, but as far as like 15 to 18 hours is concerned, I don't love it because I have actually, uh, on the unit that I rent it, I have overcooked my brisket, putting it right on top of that heating element. Other than that, I don't think there's too much uh, features wise that I could talk about other than a couple things. One, part of the reason this was $600, not full price, one, because it's used. And frankly, I don't know how old this unit is. What I do know is these units, they last for a long time. Um, FWE has amazing customer service. I've called them already like six different times and they've answered on time. They got me the part numbers that I need, like this handle. Part of the reason this puppy was a little cheaper than normal is because this handle's broken. I need a new handle, which is fine. With a functioning handle, what happens is you simply pressure push the door close and it automatically will latch itself. And then to open, you just pull on the vertical latch, it releases, and now it's open. There is some heat stripping to make sure that all of the heat is enclosed within the element. And uh, there's four caster wheels, so it's rollable. And outside of that, my friends, 
that is the warmer. Now, again, I said in the beginning of the video, I know what you're probably thinking. It sounds good, but eh, the odds of me getting a commercial warmer slim to none. There's a solution. Before I got this, I played around with the idea of getting a smaller warming cabinet. So I started to do a bunch of research and looking around and Googling and Facebooking to find a smaller unit. And I landed on the unit that you see here. This unit is more residential in nature because it's not almost as tall as I am. And it fits four full-size sheet pans. This is a full-size sheet pan for context. I have fit like four briskets on this thing. And then depending upon how much space you give yourself in the warmer, you can start to like Lincoln wall the briskets. So I can do four pops this way, and then I can bring the briskets back this way. So I say all that to say, uh, the unit that I just showed you and or that you're looking at right now, it can fit a good amount of briskets and or ribs and let's be honest, guys, ask yourself, when's the last time I've cooked for 20 people or 50 or 100 people? If you've never done it, the odds of you needing a full-size warmer is slim to none. Something like this unit is the perfect size. Like that thing can hold four plus briskets. Four plus briskets feeds an entire, well, I was gonna say an army. It might not feed an army, but it feeds a lot of people. And, um, and that will give you the capability to produce restaurant style brisket. Guys, the only difference between uh, a brisket coming from a well-known Texas joint, other than the fact that they've been cooking brisket for a long time in mass quantities and they're experts. So other than their fire management and the way they trim their briskets and some of that stuff, other than that, the main common denominator between your backyard brisket and their restaurant quality brisket is just the fact that they're able to hold it for 12 to 15 to 18 hours. And I'm going to say this, and this might create some controversy, so I apologize in advance, but if you are in the camp of holding briskets long-term does not change the quality of your brisket, frankly, you're wrong. Why are you wrong? Well, because for a decade, for 10 years, I cooked on a backyard pit. I did not own a 500. I did not own a warmer. Frankly, when I started barbecuing, YouTube wasn't even remotely what it is today, so I didn't have the luxury of seeing all the guys doing the fancy like oven wizardry with briskets. I just cooked briskets. I let them rest on my countertop for a couple hours and then I served it. The next iteration of that was I had an epiphany like, well, I might be able to drag out an extra hour or two uh, inside of a cooler. So I just plopped the brisket inside of a cooler. My point is I was doing uh, long cooks to like short holds for many, many years. And I got to a point where I was serving some pretty good quality brisket. It wasn't until out of necessity that I even rented a warmer that I realized, wait, there is a huge discrepancy between what I was doing and the quality of that product and what I just created today. Probably the best brisket I ever made because of this bad boy. Something special happens inside of the warmer, specifically with brisket, that does not, it simply does not happen without a long hold. Let me actually explain what's happening, not scientifically, because I'm no scientist. I don't know all the, the fancy terms, but I can tell you with some bro science what happens. So you cook the brisket, let's say for 12 hours on your backyard pit. You uh, let it rest on a countertop down to 145 or 150 and you served it, or you let it rest in a cooler for a couple hours and you served it. Through the duration of that brisket cook, the brisket starts off raw and soft and pliable. Through the duration of the cook, it starts to tighten itself up. Then it starts evaporative cooling, which is the equivalent of humans when we sweat. We get really hot, we overexert ourselves, our body creates sweat, it starts to cool us off. The brisket does the same thing. Somewhere around 145 to 150, the brisket starts to sweat itself and tighten up and then starts to release liquid or evaporative cool. During that process, it is now going from raw and soft to partially cooked and tight to now softening up towards the end of the cook that produces that nice, pliable, meaty, juicy thing that's brisket that we all love. My point is, once that happens and you temp it and it's done, call it 195, 200, 203, wherever you're finishing brisket, there is another level of softness that that brisket can achieve 
if you give it a, if you give it more time inside of a humid, partially warm environment that it does not get resting in a cooler or resting in a countertop. During that long hold, I promise you guys, something special happens inside of that brisket where it starts to reabsorb some of that liquid that it otherwise would have lost. The fat starts to, uh, I don't want to say render because it's not warm enough to render, but the fat starts to get even more soft, even more sticky. The texture of the actual beef, the slice that you give off, is different in texture for the better. The fat render and the bark is different in texture and even flavor for the better, only because you created a warm, humid environment for that brisket to relax. Guys, we hammer briskets for 12 hours inside of a smoker. Highly convective. Dude, 275 or 300 degrees, that's hot. That's not, I mean, we call it low and slow. For me, that talks more about the fire than what happens inside of the cook chamber because nothing inside of the cook chamber is slow. There is air that's just convecting itself around, if that's even a word. We hammer the briskets, giving that brisket time to relax, calm itself down, and figure out where those juices are supposed to go intermuscularly, meaning inside of the brisket, makes all the difference. So if you are in the camp of long holds don't make a difference, I can tell you only because I've cooked more briskets not long holding it than I have long holding it. I can tell you it is the, the difference isn't even comparable. If you're anything like me, you're a backyard warrior and you cook for your friends and family, um, there is a very stressful thing that happens in backyard barbecue where you try to time out everything, meaning you try to plan for the briskets and then the ribs, but you don't have enough cook space. And then you're wondering, how am I going to rest this? But then you're making sides and you got the Mac in the oven and it's just like, it's mass mayhem. And then on top of that, your family is like, hey, uh, pit master, when's the food going to be ready? It, it's, it's peak stress. The food warmer allows you to breathe, just cook the brisket the day before. Take your time. Have a cigar. Crack a beer. It's bliss. You don't have to rush anything. And then when it's done, set the brisket on the counter. Let it come down to about 150. Stick it in your food warmer. Forget about it. Your pit now is ready. If you want to do ribs the next day, you can get some good sleep. Wake up. Do some ribs for five or six hours. Your oven's open. Your stove top's open. Everything's good. Guys, I, I can't stress to you enough how much this thing has revolutionized the way that I do barbecue. Um, this is certainly not a paid ad because FWE has no idea who I am. And frankly, you've probably never even seen my tiny channel. For the love of barbecue and, and, and always trying to level up my own barbecue, I went out on a limb and purchased this thing so that I could test it for you guys. I can battle test it. I can figure out What's the pros? What's the cons? How does it really work? And then I can produce some more content that satisfies your barbecue palate. Let's round this thing out. At this point in the video, you might be thinking a couple things. I'm kind of picking up what you're putting down. I don't know if I'm totally sold. I'd like to try it out. I'd urge you, uh, look around locally and see if there is a rental company that rents out uh, restaurant equipment or like party equipment. So rent it, try it out. Pricing for me, it's $100 for three days, meaning... If I rent it on a Thursday, I return it that following Monday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three full days. It's a hundred bucks. You cannot beat it. I've paid more in brisket than I have in this. So there's that. Uh, second, you might be in the camp of like, I'm sold. I was ready to buy this 10 minutes ago in the video. If you're in that camp, link is in the description. I have a, an affiliate link to Amazon. There are many people in barbecue backyard and otherwise that have used this specific model. And I, I can't tell you if it's, you know, if it's going to last you forever. What I do know is um, at the rate that most backyard barbecuers are smoking meat, you're probably not going to be running that thing every week, all week long, like the restaurants do. So for the backyard warrior, I don't know for the price and for the size, I don't know if you could find a better alternative. So uh, please support the channel, use that link, check out at Amazon, and you get all of the benefits of using Amazon. The third camp would be you just totally disagree. And to that, appreciate the support, but I can't help you. With that said, guys, if you are just digging, digging the Canadian tuxedo with the lizard lick Tacovas on, give your boy Frizzy Frizz a like and a comment. 
If you think that I own the title for the best dressed bastard in barbecue, then please leave a comment, like, comment, subscribe guys. And lastly, before you run, before you run, whatever content you wanna see, really pertaining to any barbecue, but pertaining to the food warmer, let me know. Leave me a comment on any of my videos. I respond to everything. So comment on the video. Let me know what you want to see. Guys, I am a barbecue purist, fanatic, fan. I obsess about barbecue, but not big box barbecue. I don't like big box barbecue. I am a fan of craft barbecue, artisanal barbecue. Every little granular detail of barbecue is what I'm about. That's what the channel's about. If that's what you're about, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. For all the support, meet and greet. As always, over and out.